the California department store Mervyn's originated in the dreams of a little boy. As a kid, Mervyn Morris worked in his father's small retail store. He watched and worked and learned what it took to operate a successful store, and that's where the seeds of his dream were planted. Morris wanted to run his own store someday, and that dream turned into a reality. Morris built a West Coast department store phenomenon. At its peak, Mervyn's had just shy of 300 stores in over a dozen states. Morris named the store after his first name, Mervyn. However, as plans got underway for that first store, a designer suggested he change the I in Mervyn to a Y to add flair and visual appeal. Morris agreed, and Mervyn's with a Y was born. The first Mervyn's opened in the town of San Lorenzo, California in 1949. It was small, just 2,800 square feet, and staffed by only two people. On opening day, Morris passed out gardenias to the women and cigars to the men. The first store grossed $100,000 in its first year, and at its peak, almost $15 million. Mervyn's created a niche. It offered a no-frills shopping experience. That saved money in overhead, and those savings were passed down to the consumer in the form of lower prices than other department stores. Mervyn's also had discounted factory seconds jeans, t-shirts, underwear, and even some linens that had minor and nearly undetectable flaws. Mervyn's specialized, though, in clothing for the whole family, as well as some home furnishings. Their centerpiece of merchandise was a line of private label family apparel. It was hugely popular with suburban families, with its big brands and small prices. Morris was a smart businessman. He was forward thinking while also being very present in the moment. For many years, Morris was the only retailer in California to publish his own print advertisement. It was distributed both in the store and in the Sunday newspaper, promoting the weekly sales. In 1969, with just five stores, he started an executive training program. In 1974, Mervyn's stores were among some of the first to use computerized wands to read the barcodes at the point of sale. A second Mervyn's opened in 1962 in Fremont. In the 1970s, they expanded throughout California in cities like Fullerton and Huntington Beach. By 1978, Mervyn's had 50 stores spread across three states, and other companies took notice. One in particular, Dayton Hudson's, wanted in. They purchased Mervyn's for $300 million. Dayton Hudson's believed in Mervyn so much that they allocated half of their capital budget for building new stores. In the mid-80s, Mervyn's was highly regarded in the retail industry. They say imitation is the highest form of flattery and many of its rivals adopted some of Mervyn's ways. For example, many department stores started to publish their own advertisements, mimicking Mervyn's successful marketing strategy. J.C. Penney switched to focus on apparel and soft goods, just like Mervyn's, abandoning its identity as a full-line department store. And finally, competitors started to sell department store quality items at reduced prices which Mervyn's had been doing all along. Well, this helped the sales of the competitors. 
but it hurt Mervyn's sales. Mervyn's moved into Florida in 1988 with the opening of the Lakeland store. A campaign expansion continued across the U.S. for the next decade, with stores opening in states like Georgia, Arizona, Colorado, Texas, Michigan, Minnesota, and Washington. But sales dropped, hurt by California's economy in the 1990s. Mervyn's went all in with the most popular clothing, slashing inventory and variety. During the late 90s, the stores tried a rebrand to Mervyn's California. They had high hopes for an updated, brighter store logo. They hung new ad banners in the aisles and repositioned the cash registers to the front of the stores. They even enlisted former San Francisco 49ers quarterback, Joe Montana, who appeared in both print catalogs and TV commercials. The goal was to reconnect with their West Coast roots. The PR campaign did little to increase revenue though, and after a few years, the California was dropped from the name. Dayton Hudson's, disappointed with Mervyn's poor performance, cut the expense budget. In 1997, Mervyn's closed all its stores in Florida and Georgia, hoping to save money. The California economy saw a rebound, and there was hope that Mervyn's might survive. But then in 2000, Dayton Hudson's changed its name to Target since Target had 75% of their profit. With the sharp decline in focus, a drop in sales ensued. Within a decade, Mervyn's liquidated its assets through bankruptcy. Stores were sold and signs were taken down. Mervyn Morris's dream of owning a retail shop turned into one of this country's most beloved department stores for 59 years, and some of his ways of doing business continue on in stores still today. Thanks for watching Memory Mountain. If you enjoyed this video, please click to subscribe to our channel and hit the thumbs up button. Be sure to tap the notification bell so you'll be one of the first to know when we post our next story looking back over the landscape of Americana.